I, I want to introduce y'all to our next kid media, my boy Aaron Kimbro. I knew it. How y'all doing, man? Y'all doing good tonight? Yo, this some good shit, man. Give it up for the other comics you done seen on stage and shit. Give it up for them. They was all good except for Q Smoke. Give it up for them. Everybody was funny except for that nigga, man. I'm glad to see y'all in here. It's been kind of a rough couple years and shit in the city. I'm glad to see the diversity in the room. We got black people, we got white people, we got half gay people in here. I'm glad, <laughs> glad to see that shit, man. Cause y'all know, like I know, Louisville, we went through a bad time two, three years ago with the Breonna Taylor shit, right? Y'all yeah. young, was y'all involved in that shit? Yeah. I was out there in the protest. I was out there heavy. I became the leader of the protest for about two days. It was just on accident though. I didn't mean to become the leader. I was just sitting at home minding my business, looking on Facebook and my phone went on bing. Then I seen it, people was downtown. Somebody was on Facebook like, get downtown, we protesting and riding. I was like, oh shit, I'm getting ready to go down there. But then I was nervous because I didn't know what was going on. So I said, I ain't going. Then my phone rung. My partner said, hey man, what you doing? I said, I'm at home. He said, nigga, get downtown. It's crazy down here. I said, where you at? He said, 6th and Jefferson. So I got in my car, I went down to 6th and Jefferson. When I got down there, it was the craziest shit I ever seen. They had police down there. They had dogs down there. They were spraying people with pepper spray. Everybody was riding. They were shaking the ambulance. And I didn't know what was going on. And I was standing there all by myself. You know when you're in a room and it's crowded, but you don't know nobody? That's how I felt. So I'm looking around for my friend who called me, but I didn't see nobody. Then my phone rung, and I answered the phone and said, hello? It was my homeboy, Jerry. He said, Eric, where you at? I said, man, I'm downtown at 6th and Jefferson. He said, I know. I said, how you know? He said, because you on TV. I said, TV? What TV? I don't see no TV. He said, take two steps to the right. So I took two steps to the right. He said, nigga, you right in the middle of the screen. Do something. So I did what I knew to do. I said, Black Lives Matter, bitch. And the shit went viral. <laughs> Niggas started calling me from everywhere. They was calling me from California, Florida, Newburgh. Niggas called me from everywhere. <laughs> so then the next day, I'm at home. And my phone's ringing off the hook. All the major news stations is calling me. CNN, Fox News, ESPN. That's a major news station in my house. Everybody's calling me. So I answer the phone. Say, hello. Say, hey, Eric, this is Tom from CNN News. I say, hey, Tom, how you doing? He said, fine. He said, we see that you're the leader of the protest. That's what I said. I said, damn. I didn't want him to know that I wasn't. So I was like, how can I help you, Tom? He said, we just got one question to ask you. And I said, what's that? And he said, what is the agenda of the protest? I said, excuse me, because I didn't know. I was buying time. I said, excuse me? He said, what's the agenda of the protest? And I said, our agenda is what our agenda was. And I hung up, because I didn't know. So now I'm sitting there and I'm like, damn, I wonder what's going on with the protest. I wonder why it's happening. I didn't have a clue. Then my phone rung again. It's my homeboy I said, hey, Eric, where you at? I said, man, I'm at the crib. He said, man, get downtown on 26th and Broadway. They just killed David McAtee. I said, oh shit, for real? He said, get down here. So when I went downtown, I got down to 26th and Broadway. Now it was crazy shit I ever seen. The body was still laying outside. Everybody was chanting, look kids, chanting, police dogs. Now they got the National Guard there. Now everybody's outside. The, all the major news stations, Charles Booker and shit. Nigga, what you doing here? It's like, nigga, I'm running for Senate, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Charles Booker was out there. You know what I'm saying? And look kids, they chanting. But it was some cool shit I didn't know. They was counting. They was going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fuck twelve. I was like, oh shit, what is that? They did it again. They were like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
fuck 12. So I got hyped. Nigga, I started doing this shit. I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Fuck 12. But then I said, who the fuck is 12? Cause I didn't know who they was. I didn't know they was the police. I'm old, nigga, I didn't know. We called them one time, y'all called them 12. Shit's different. <laughs> nigga, so now I'm standing there. News stations everywhere. I'm looking around. I don't know nobody again. My phone rings, but it's hello. It's like my friend Cherry. Hey, Eric, where you at, man? I said, nigga, I'm on 26th and Broadway. He said, nigga, I know. I said, how you know? He says, you on TV? I said, TV? What TV? I don't see no TV. He said, nigga, take two steps to the left. So I took two steps to the left. He said, you right in the middle of the TV screen, nigga, do something. So I did what I knew to do. I said, fuck 12. And the shit went viral. Now niggas is calling me from everywhere, man. Charles Booker done called me. Goddamn the man done called me. They done called me from the senator's office and everything. Then I answer my phone again. It's Fox News. I said, hello. I said, hey, Eric. This is Megan from Fox News. I said, that's some white name, man. I said, I said, hey. I said, hey, Megan, how you doing? <laughs> Shut up, nigga. I said, hey, Megan, how you doing? She said, we see that you the leader of the protest. Now I'm taking on my role. I said, why, yes, I am. How can I help you? I done went viral in two days. She said, we just got one question to ask you, but I still didn't know what was going on. I said, what's the question? She said, we just want to know what was the purpose of the protest? I said, excuse me, because I still didn't know. She said, what's the purpose of the protest? I said, our purpose is what our purpose was, and I hung up, because I still didn't know. Now I'm sitting there in my room as the leader of the protest. I'm writing down what we going to do. We going to march. We going to take over. We going to storm the senator's office. I got a list of demands that we need met by the police department, because I'm the leader of the protest. Right then, my phone rings. It's a friend of mine, female. I answer, hello? She said, hey, Eric, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting down here writing out the demands for the protest. She said, well, as the leader of the protest, I said, well, yes, I am. She said, we need you to get downtown right now. I said, why, what's going on? She said, they looting and they rioting. I said, really, I'm on my way. So when I get downtown, I get to Fourth and Muhammad Ali. They was going crazy. They were spray painting shit on the walls. They was busting windows out of cars. Everybody, they was lewd and they was riding. And I look over to my right and I see a lady dressed in all black with a hammer. Get ready to bust out the window of Eddie Merlo's. And I'm like, don't do that. As the leader of the protest, this ain't right. This is not what we're here for. But when she looked at me, she bust the window out. And she went in Eddie Merlo's, and I said, no, that's not right. But when she came out, she had three big bottles of wine that my sister liked. So I was like, bitch, go get me some, and hurry up. So then I look over to the left, and they going in CVS. So instinctively, I grabbed a basket, and I went in CVS myself. I was like, I got to get me some shit. So when I went in CVS, all the black dudes were stealing the pills from the pharmacy. All the white dudes were stealing the alcohol. So I went to where I knew best. I went to the ass scene on TV section. Cause I was like, I got to get some shit. So when I'm filling my basket up with all the shit from the ass scene on TV section, my phone rings. I say, hello, it's my mama. She said, Eric, where you at? I said, I'm in CVS. She said, I know. I said, how you know? She said, nigga, you on TV? I said, TV, what TV? I don't see no TV. She said, take two steps to the right. So I took two steps to the right. And she said, nigga, give me that head massager and get your black ass up out of there. So that's how I became the leader of the protest that day. Damn, y'all should have clapped hard on that one, bro. You know what I'm saying? Man, y'all should have stood the fuck up and like, nigga, that was a genius. Shit.
I, I did that shit in front of a thousand people last weekend because I sell out fucking shows. I don't know what happened tonight. <laughs> yeah. But during the protest, comedy was low. So I had me a little job and shit. <laughs> the nigga had to work. Shit sucked. I see how y'all regular motherfuckers feel. Shit sucks. <laughs> shit, but I got fired though. Real shit, because I went to work. I went to work, and my boss was like, yo, I seen you on TV at the protest. I was like, yeah. Yeah, my white supervisor named Brad. I said, yeah, Brad, you see me? He said, that ain't the type of shit we need at this job. You got to let your black ass go. So I got fired, dog, for protesting and shit. Yeah, fuck Brad. That shit's wild, though, man. But you know, I did, I did what, uh, what black people do when we get fired. I went out to eat with my little chick that night. <laughs> Shit. Niggas don't give a fuck, dude. We get fired, fuck it, nigga. What you wanna do, nigga, I'm free. Yeah. You want smoke, let's smoke, nigga. So, yeah, I went out to eat. We went to a little fancy little restaurant, got something to eat and shit. Shit was cool. Boom, boom, boom. I had to pee. I got up, I went to the bathroom, and after I peed, I turned around. There was a nigga in there. You know, you go in these bathrooms and shit, and when you finish peeing, you turn around, and the motherfucker in there trying to sell you some black and mouths and a paper towel and shit, and wipe your hands. The bathroom attendant and shit. So I'm looking at this nigga like, man, what point in your life does being a bathroom attendant become a career decision? How do you explain that shit at your 20 year high school reunion and shit? You know what I'm saying? You, you be at your high school reunion and you see motherfuckers and shit, you be like, oh shit, it's Q Smoke. <laughs> Nigga, you a famous comedian now, you look good, man. I just, he be like, oh man, I've been touring all around the country and shit. You know what I'm saying? I've been bombing with these jokes for years, man. It's going great. <laughs> it's great. Then you look around again, boom, oh shit, it's Thomas J. Shit, you look good, man, what you been doing? He said, man, I've been sweating real profusely on stages everywhere. Like, you look great. <laughs> then they look at you and be like, Eric, you look okay. What have you been doing for the last 20 years? And you like, I'm the manager at old Charlie's bathroom, man. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't be mad at the nigga. The nigga had a job. It'd have been a while I ain't had no job. But I had a job interview last Thursday and shit. So I'm gonna tell y'all white people, y'all might not know, y'all young, y'all might not have been through it yet. But black people, when we show up for job interviews, we can't be who we really are. We gotta put on our white boy voice. We can't show up. And they be like, hey, Eric, I got to show you around the plant how you feel about the job. And you be like, yo, it's cool, man. I probably work here like two months and shit till my unemployment kick in. Me and my girl smoke a little weed. Shit's cool. Like, you can't do that shit. When we show up at a job interview, we got to put on our white boy voice. And I'm pretty good at mine. After they showed me around the plant, the dude was like, little supervisor was like, Eric, Oh my God, we think you're great. We want to offer you this position. How do you feel about the position? So when my white boy voice kicked in, I was like, <clears throat> I'm good at this shit too, hold up. <clears throat> per se. <laughs> Due to the fact that I am uninformed to the highest degree of accuracy, I shall hesitate to articulate in fear of deviating too far on or too far off the proper course of restitute. In short, sir, I don't know. <laughs> he was like, oh my God, Eric, I love you. I think that you're great. This is when they asked you that trick question. He said, when can you start? And what do you normally say, my nigga? You usually say as soon as possible, right? They're like, when can you start? you like, as soon as possible. And he said, great, why don't you start tomorrow? And that's when my black voice kicked in. I said, hold up, nigga. Tomorrow's Friday. 
I'm gonna need Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. So I found myself on Saturday night working in O'Charlie's in the bathroom, handing out paper towels and selling black and mild. Yo, I'm Eric Kimbrough. Y'all been okay.